Deep in the heart of the Canadian wilderness, there lies a legend that has been passed down through generations. The legend of the Wendigo, a creature that is said to haunt the woods and prey on the souls of the living. For centuries, the indigenous people of Canada have told tales of the Wendigo, a creature that is said to lurk in the depths of the forest, waiting for its next victim. Some say it is a demon, others say it is a spirit, but all agree it is a creature of darkness and terror. Despite being a legend, the Wendigo still haunts the minds of many, leaving them wondering if this creature of darkness truly exists. So join us as we explore the legend of the Wendigo and discover the truth behind one of the most terrifying and mysterious legends of all time. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. Let's get moving. The Wendigo was supposedly a lost hunter, according to legend. He was forced to resort to the ultimate in taboos, cannibalism. Wendy became so desperate to satisfy his hunger that he ignored the harsh winter conditions. After he smacked himself on human flesh, the guy turned into a beast that would forever wander the Canadian and Minnesotan woods in quest of more human prey. The Algonquian-speaking Native Americans have a legend about a creature called a Wendigo. Wendigo is derived from an Algonquin term, bad spirit. The legend of the Wendigo has been passed down through the decades and continues to fascinate indigenous communities and academics. Tribal stories about the Wendigo in Native American culture vary, but in general, this creature is a beast that can take human form and lives in extremely frigid climates. People have different interpretations of the Wendigo, with some believing it to be a cannibalistic monster that feeds on human flesh and others viewing it as an angry spirit that punishes those who disobey the natural order. Wendigo are considered particularly skinny because their hunger is reflected in their physical appearance. Some people consider Wendigo to be giants due to their height of approximately 4.5 meters, 14.8 feet, although they have emaciated bodies. It is generally accepted that Wendigo have luminous eyes, large yellow fangs, and lengthy tongues. However, the physical description of this creature varies slightly among the various Algonquian peoples. It is said that the majority of Wendigo have skin that is sallow and yellowish. However, other people say that their skin is matted with hair or that it is decaying. Long before Europeans arrived in North America, Algonquian oral history contained a version of the Wendigo fable that had been passed down through the generations. Paul Lejeune, a Jesuit missionary who lived among the Algonquin people in the early 17th century in Quebec, provided the earliest recorded account of a Wendigo by a European. In 1636, Lejeune wrote the following in a report that he submitted to his superiors in Paris. This devilish woman added that the Wendigo had eaten some Atikagukin, which are the tribes that live north of the river called Three Rivers, and that he would eat many more of them if he were not called elsewhere. The Atikagukin are the people who live north of the river that is called Three Rivers. However, Achen, who was described as being similar to a werewolf, would come in his place to devour them, all the way up to the French fort. It was said that he would kill the French people themselves. The account compiled by Father Lejeune reveals that Europeans living in the 17th century held the same firm belief in malevolent supernatural spirits as their contemporary First Nations counterparts. Father Lejeune's report was written over 60 years before the Salem Witch Trials. It wasn't until well into the 20th century that missionaries in the area that would later become Canada continued to record traditions of the Wendigo. In the 1800s, stories could also be found in the western frontier among the indigenous people of the Plains and the workers of the Hudson's Bay Company, HBC. Some of the records kept by HBC traders detail interactions with indigenous spiritual leaders who claimed to experience fits of religious fervor. These people were frequently accused of being Wendigos by the indigenous peoples, and the HBC traders occasionally portrayed them as being mad. In some instances, members of the community or family of the accused took the precautionary measure of killing the suspected Wendigo. One example of this is when three men murdered the spiritual leader of the Cree people, Abishabas, after he succumbed to his avarice and murdered an indigenous family, which made other people to believe that he was a Wendigo. Some tales tell of the Wendigo having a human past. The most well-known interpretation of the legend asserts that a Wendigo is created whenever a human being engages in cannibalism, regardless of whether or not it was an act of desperation to stay alive. It is widely held that if a person eats the flesh of another human being, they will become a Wendigo due to being possessed by bad spirits and transforming their body. We hope you enjoyed learning about the legend of the Wendigo and the history behind this terrifying creature. 
As we come to the end of our journey, we want to hear from you. Have you ever heard of any personal accounts of encounters with Wendigo? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video interesting, don't forget to like and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on our next spooky adventure.